Hi everybody, I got another video I want to make. This was actually on my heart months ago and I just, the Lord reminded me that I haven't made it yet. And I apologize, I don't, I'm on my way to London right now. So I, unfortunately I don't have the Bible with me to, to get the scripture. But I wanted to make this talking about the scripture telling us not to curse. And I can't even tell you where that is if anybody out there wants to put that in the in the comments that'd be great but I like usual I'm gonna use an actual testimony to show you what the what that verse is really meaning on not cursing because I know a lot of people are very sensitive to even like uh, cuss words and and things like that and of course yes it's good to try to keep our mouth clean am I perfect no not not even close <laughs> But that is not what the scripture means when it's telling us not, not to curse. And I'm going to use this testimony to explain that to you. So I don't know exactly how old I was. I'm going to guess maybe 14 because I believe I was at the our second home. So I would have been at least 14 for this. And I don't remember what... I was in the... If you've seen any of the videos, I, you see my parents' house. I was in the front driveway there. And my dad was out, and he was mentioning something about my my aunt Mary, which uh, anytime I talk about uh, family, it's painful for me because I got thrown away. But I loved my aunt Mary a lot, and my uncle Rick, and. Uh, when I was about eight, I went up, I've talked about the gift of gold and how it wasn't just gold. When I was eight, we went up uh, for a week's vacation at a little lake called Rice Lake, which is about three hours east of Toronto. And four of my my families, like, uh, it's hard to explain, to have such a big family, like, like my family and then aunt and uncles, aunt and uncle, aunt and uncle, and you know, obviously I had a bunch of cousins there. There was four of our families went up there and we, we literally rented this whole little lodge together. We, we took over the whole thing that week. And anyways, to the story, we were swimming in the Rice Lake. There was a little beach there with one of those little float docks you can jump in off of. And I was only eight years old. I don't know why so many things happened when I was eight, but that was definitely one of the... Eight and 17 were... Oh, that's another testimony I have to share. Okay, I gotta stay focused. <laughs> so we're swimming in the water. And I like to go underwater, even though it was like kind of murky water and dirty. I was the kid that was totally swimming under the water with my eyes open and looking at things. And there was probably about 15 of us in there swimming. And I'm underwater swimming, and all of a sudden I see all these bright colors, like super bright. And my first thought was that it was like some sort of kid's toy because it was like bright pinks and neon greens and blues and, and all kinds of things. So I, I reached down, I grabbed it, and I picked it up. And I stood up out of the water, and at the same time, everybody except for my Aunt Mary ran out of the water, and they ran away from the beach to go do something else. And I'm looking in my hand, and I have this perfect... Beautiful, like I found gold that's worth hundreds of billions, and I'm telling you, this this thing was like one of the most beautiful things I ever found. And what it was, it was a black opal, and it was about I would say about three inches wide, probably about three quarter of an inch thick, and it had like a black ring around the edge of it. And on inside, if you've ever seen people that find black opal opals online, usually they have a lot of black and then maybe some color specs in them well this thing was amazing it was like solid bright color patches and then very little black in between them like it's probably I've looked online at it and I've never seen a nicer black opal ever even looking online than this thing I pulled out at eight years old but anyways it, it turned into the same story as all the gold did my aunt's like give me that let me see it took it out of my hand and then I can't remember what she said. She said, I'm going to hold on to this. And I'm like, I started crying. I said, why does everybody, I was a little kid. I'm like, I was starting to clue in. Why does everybody always steal everything from me that I find? 
and my aunt looked at me, she's like, I'll hold on to it, and I'll sell it one day, and we'll split it, which, which never happened, that family ended up writing me off for it too, and they actually bragged about 20 years ago, they had a jeweler look at it, and he said it was so amazing of a black opal, he could only say it's in between one and two million, back like 20 years ago, so I, what it would be worth now, I don't know. Who cares, right? We store. I always got to say we store treasures in heaven. I have to like keep that in my my mind constantly to get through what I've been through. But anyways, the whole point of sharing that testimony is just kind of why I got wrote off. So like five, six years later, my dad's bringing her up, and I think he's kind of mocking what happened because he must have knew I got that stolen from me. And I'm in the height of my anointing like I talk about then. And I got very angry and I said, I hope Aunt Mary, and I don't remember what I said, something I should have said, I hope something bad, like, I can't remember exactly what I said, but I said, I hope something bad happens to her, something along that lines. And it was crazy. It wasn't five seconds after I said that, my mom comes out the front door with the phone in her hand. She's like speed walking towards me with the phone. I mean like literally five seconds, 10 seconds after I said that. And she gives me the phone and I put it to my ears and it's my Aunt Mary on the phone. And I've never heard her like this in my life. She was always giddy and a giggly aunt, you know, like she was a lot of fun to be around as a kid. And she sounded like she was being tortured. She's like, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And it was like I could tell she was literally being tortured by something. And it was 10 seconds after I had said those words to her. And I said, it's okay, Aunt Mary, it's okay, I forgive you. And I could feel the pain start to come off her. And she slowed down and she started talking normal again. And I said goodbye. And I, I got off the phone and my dad looked at me and he's like, you can't have an anointing as high as the one you have right now and say things like that. And it just, my, it just taught me such a lesson, you know, like the Lord had me in such a high place. Every word that comes out of our mouth is so important. And I wanted to share this truth of what the Bible really talks about when it speaks of not cursing. It's not talking about saying shit or any word like that. It's talking about speaking curses on a person. Like a witch puts curses on somebody. We are not to curse. We are not to say, I hope that person falls off a roof or I hope that person dies. That is the curse the Bible is speaking of. And this testimony taught me that. Instantly the Lord showed me that at the age of 14. And I've been wanting to share that. It's a very important thing to know. Do we need to go around swearing all the time? Of course not. We are to be holy, for he is holy. So we don't need to be cursing and swearing all the time. But when the Bible speaks about not cursing, it was talking about speaking curses on people and speaking bad things to happen to them. That is what the Bible meant, and I wanted to share that. So let's leave this video with uh, our blessed hope, Jesus returning any moment. Uh, one thing I haven't shared with you guys, I'm going to share right now, is I almost went completely blind two or three times in the last two or three months. The doctor has been trying some new tricks on my eyes. He's uh, uh, He's been getting chemical in my eye right as he does the injection, and it gets in and it attacks my, my optical nerve and my retina. And uh, my lights almost went out a couple times to where I just started seeing black flashes everywhere and I was going blind. And uh, it's, it's a horrible thing that I'm going through right now. I'm actually headed to the hospital to get injections and it's not gonna, it's not a fun day for me every month, but I've tried to not get an injections and my, my eyes start to fail. So even though I'm praying for healing from our healer Jesus, if I'm to go through this, I'm, I'm going through it and I'm gonna do it the best I can. But he keeps doing some pretty bad things to me. He keeps, you know, rubbing he keeps rubbing hand sanitizer on his hands before he gives me the injections and then like two or three months in a row he would literally stick his thumb on my eyeball instead of just grabbing the top of the eyelid and pulling my eyelid up he literally drags his eye across my eyeball and then gives me the injection so some of that hand sanitizer gets inside my eye and it I believe it's done damage to my optical nerve which almost made me blind but the positive thing is the reason why I'm telling you this, and I shared this a couple years ago, uh, one of the prophecies my dad said, which I'd like to break all these word curses, but they just, some things just come true that are prophesied, is that they would have me almost blind when we get raptured out of here. And I, I don't know what else to say other than 
it's almost happened and that's how close we are and be joyful even through my suffering take it take it as a good thing we are so close to seeing Jesus we can feel how tired God is and how over how tired we are and the father and Jesus how tired we are of these wicked people the end is near all things are going to come to pass soon and I can't wait I honestly I can't wait to get out of here I'm still working every day I'm trying to and by working I mean trying to get others to the kingdom which some days are amazing and some days are, are not but stay positive you guys keep your oil in your lamps keep prayed up try to stay in the word it's it's such a comforting place to go you know when you're having that bad day and you flip open the Bible and somehow you're reading a scripture that pertains to what you need to hear to comfort you for what you're going through that's how amazing God is let's keep that in mind and always remember all things are possible with God like these testimonies I share for a reason. I talk about a high anointing, but if you believe in Jesus, all these things are possible for you too. You can go heal people. Um, a man, I was, I've been fishing in a little derby on Port Dover the last week now, and there was a man at the end with a neck brace on at the right at the end of the lighthouse. And I offered him prayer for healing, and he was very skeptical. He's an older guy in his 60s, and he said, oh, he's like, I've already had nurses pray for me. He said, I never received anything. I said, you know, I'm one of God's anointed. I've, I've witnessed many miracles in my life. And he said, you know what? It's free. It can't hurt. And I said, you're right. And I went and prayed on him, and the first thing I said didn't do anything. I prayed healing on his neck. Nothing happened. And then I said, I, right now I speak to the muscles and the tendons in the neck to receive healing. And I just felt the tingling come from my shoulder down and out my hand. And I looked at him. I said, well, "What'd you feel?" And he's he had, he's just seen the look on his. He's like he's like I don't know. And I said, "I could tell by your face right now." I said, "You just re received healing from Jesus." And he was sitting there smiling. Hey, eh? he had just had a bunch of pain taken off him. And he walked away. And they were both so so happy. Obviously, he had his daughter or something with him, but. You know, I talk about the rough things I'm going through and the Lord's still using me. I've still been healing people. Satan, you're not going to win. I'm never going to turn away from Jesus. That's You might as well just leave. You're wasting your time with me. He'll never let me out of his hands and I'll never leave them. So your fight with me is a waste of time. Anyways, you guys, stay strong. I love you. God bless.